All right, guys, welcome on board of my MiG-29. It's a brand new acquisition. As you can see, it's very, very beautiful plane. Oh my God. Yeah, the uh, designers at the Grand Gravage Bureau uh, made a fantastic job. Now, let's close the canopy. And let's start the engine. We have actually two engines. So what we do to start the engine on this plane? Uh, I'm gonna show you with the mouse. So they're gonna be RPM here. There's two needles. And then there is the light here that comes on when the ignition is on. So ignition won't work. The first thing you need to do, you need to turn on the avionics. Now, there's the sound. To get rid of the sound, we need to turn down the volume of it. It is the RWR. Um, now, if I now try to start the engine... Okay, it worked. Uh, so, because what you need to do, you need to open the throttle fully for a moment and close it fully and then generally will start. Uh, if you don't open throttle fully, I think, don't think I was able to start it. To wait until this first engine comes online. Okay. It's still wait because, okay, the green light is out. Now full throttle on the right engine. Close the throttle and engine is starting. 450. All right. So now we can adjust the controls. That's our leader. Does it a check? Surfaces and everything are good. Yeah. Controls left and right, up and down, and left. Alright, right, so I actually don't need those instruments. I like them a lot, but um, I'm just gonna move this display so it's like this. Okay. What I like about the three screen projection is that here and here I have like a my, my side view as opposed to projection flat. So objects instead of kind of like stretching on the edges, they just I just pass them and this is more natural. Uh, it doesn't look natural in this place where you know there's this joint. So I think what developers could do would introduce multi-screen projection instead of three-screen projection. So where I could choose how many viewports I want it rendered to. If I can render it to three viewports, I can render it to five or ten viewports as well. Uh, you know, that shouldn't be a deal. Although there is this black line here, they so would have to resolve this as well. All right, I'm ready to go. Let's test our brakes. Let me think, where do I want my brakes, because... Um, so I'll show you where the brakes are on this plane. It's kind of weird, isn't it? It's a Russian way of doing it. Yak-52 have also this way. So... It's kind of weird, isn't it? It's like a bicycle brake. Reset that. This is the reset of you. Okay. Let's go. Let's test the brakes. Okay, they work. We're gonna Okay. 
Lights Taxi, Lights and Cockpit, Navigation Lights. Let's check outside. Okay. Okay, let's see what's going on. Uh, no one's coming, no one's landing. Can go in. It's this game they clear you for takeoff when you are on the strip, so it's kind of weird. It should clear me before I get Unable to clear. Okay, need to check if flaps are down because the, the indicator may indicate that. Full throttle. Now, starting this plane is very difficult. Taking off. We just go up now. Okay. Get down, up. Laps up. 300 meters requested. This is a thousand feet. And thousand feet. Okay, level up. Now we're heading off to breakpoint number seven, which is Sochi. Go to four thousand five hundred feet. Aircraft seems to be very difficult to go to level down. I can turn upside down and that's gonna be easier. It's just military dress are like this. So I can use a uh, HUD to navigate, or perhaps I want to trim it a bit. Yes. Okay. Went too high, but. Fix that. Now I'm going to show you this. Uh, this needle here is showing me where can I, where should I be going? You know. Oh, when the needle is vertical, it means that my banking angle is good to get to my destination. So I can either fly following the circle or to this needle. request that is 600 uh, kilometers per hour so we go slower and that's fine 545 30 is requested plane seems to be trimmed uh, no it's not it's trimming better it's digital trim so maybe um, Now the uh, engines are idle now, so we need to retrieve it. Trying to go at speed 630. <coughs> Just reset the view, so I have uh, also control of the view on my other yoke. I set it so that here on this yoke I have my view. 
it's pretty useful because now it's centered. If I do this, I center it, and I can glance to the right, to the left, and then my instruments if I want to, I can do a glance. I can also use mouse, right? So if I want to glance, this is better, right? I don't know exactly where is the best place for it. I don't want it to go in the way of other three things I have here. Especially not things like keyboard where I have... Like I didn't bind everything to buttons on the joystick because there's so many functions. Each plane is to be, you know, have things bound. So we're going to slow. We want uh, 650. So. I was tempted to trim because my plane started going down, but if I'm changing throttle, I shouldn't be doing that. Right? Um, the view is beautiful. Okay, 650. Let's see if this is good. Oh, okay. Not sure uh, what is this indicator saying. This indicator is saying that it will be slowing down. Okay. But that should be maintaining speed, I suppose. No. It's not maintaining. I don't necessarily know how much throttle I need to add to maintain 650. There's a tendency going to the banking to the right, so I try to trim that, but it's not so easy. All right, let's check everything again. Okay. Garden flaps are up, um, T's and P's, oh, one engine is pulling stronger than the other. There is a number on these needles, uh, if you look at it, there is a, see, number two, number one. So number one is above number two, if you look at it. Okay. This is a perfect view, actually. I don't need more than this. Uh, in this multi-display uh, rendering, the mirrors are kind of crippled. <laughs> I don't know what's going on. Why are we crippling mirrors? So, that's kind of... Yeah, I don't understand that one. So I'm going to switch mouse to pointer mode, so that it doesn't interfere with my uh, viewing. I will zoom out a bit because, um, yeah, better this way, maybe. You see some of the world around me. Maybe this first row of analog controls. Okay. What I can actually do is Use the hat on this thing, this hat here, to actually adjust the view. I should be happy now with this setting. Well, so now I have analog viewing here and digital on the same joystick. So I can use this for glancing. I can just glance here. Or I can just set permanently my viewing. Um, cool. Now, let's go to our LA point, which is the altitude is good. Uh, maintaining the altitude, speed is low, so we got to accelerate a bit. Okay, let's check the needles. Okay, sounds like maybe I can change the HUD color. So one thing I'm actually doing in this game is changing the HUD color sometimes. Maybe I put it on some button. It might be more convenient. I thought red will be more visible, but as you can see, the only color visible here is either ye bright yellow or this green. I think this is the most visible here, even though the clouds are part yellow as well. 
cosa io lo so ok uh, dove dove Well, difficult to trim. This is a wonderful aircraft to fly. Uh, let's close the mirrors because they're annoying. I mean, broken rendering in the mirrors. Okay, we've got 1,500 1, uh, kilograms of fuel left. So, I'm going to try to show you where we are on the map, if this is not going to cause us crashing. So we are halfway, oh, from here we started, so we still have to go 70 miles, okay, okay. Let's leave it like this for a moment. Let's look at that plane on the outside. the course. Right, I'm trying to do that without uh, A crashing, B detouring from the course. Okay. I like to have my controls similar to what I have on uh, in the plane, especially the plane that I like flying here. Just thinking about this wheel brake. Maybe I could use the other yoke here on this little thing. I don't know. The analog yoke. I could try that. I tried that once and it was not a good idea. <laughs> the other problem I'm having is the throttle has three levers and I have two engines so it's because like it's more for a prop lines where you have a mixture, a propeller pitch and the uh, throttle or Maybe you have mixture carburetor heat and throttle, you know, like in Cessna. So it's kind of annoying. Uh, they have three different uh, shapes on top, uh, so like different. When I touch it, I, can, I know which which I'm touching. I don't have to turn my heart to see which lever I'm touching. So if I want right engine, I know this is the, the one, this one, I don't know how to describe it. It has like a, a, a structure to it. It's kind of flat, but it has like this structure and the other one is kind of rounded. And the one that is not bound here to anything is in the middle. I decided to bind only the left and right lever and not the one in the middle, because if I bond one in the middle, then I would constantly confuse it with left and right. And I move it together with the other one. So, this way I will not confuse left with right one. Um, yeah. I must say, being a pilot of fighter jet has one disadvantage. 
like this, for example, we're flying for so long and mm, I would believe they have this uh, this water uh, bladder, something like that, that you can just zip water as you as you as you fly, like hikers do. I mean, it's, it's not like so so many hours in the air. You, you cannot without any water, anything. At least water, no. I don't know. It's really, it's really difficult to imagine flying without even water for so many hours. And sometimes I have to fly a long distance. So. Maybe intravenous uh, injection of the <laughs> food. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, I'm not sure if I want to get into this cloud. I'm going to go below this cloud. We have 49 kilometers to go. We can see the shore here. Beside Sochi is somewhere there. So I think important is to be able to fly visually and find uh, your destination based on the features of the terrain. So right now I'm uh, doing instrument flying because I don't see much terrain here. I only see clouds, so this is where I am. But uh, no, I'm supposed to not go into this cloud. It's into the side. If we're going under the cloud or over the cloud, I'm just gonna stick like this. It's good for me. Um, not sure why why this doesn't really seem well. Okay. So we've got uh, to reduce altitude. For that, we're gonna just idle the engines, and that should be enough for now. And uh, yeah, just start reducing the altitude by moving nose down a bit, maybe 20 degrees. So, this model has professional flight simulation model as opposed to Su-25. I thought that Su-25 is easy to land, but uh, it's non-professional flight model, so it's not behaving in all possible ways as a real aircraft. Um, okay, we are in some cloud. Um, it's not amazing, but okay. That's where we are. We need to be at 1800, actually. That's where they want us to be. Air brakes no longer needed. Okay, um, maybe I could bring back hood to green again. Not sure what I want to do with this. Oh, I think this one is, is it brighter to watch because this plane doesn't like stalls. This is a jet fighter, so stalling it will result in complete lack of control. It's not a glider, I can tell you that. Although, MiG-29 has very good flight properties. Uh, for a jet of this class, of course. I just trust the instruments now with my life. At the same time, I'm very ready to pull up at any time because we never know. Okay. 1000 we want to be, a little too low. That's fine, we reduce speed this way. Not much, right? Okay. 
need to go to the right a bit. So the thing about this, this cross here, this and this, I don't like it. I don't like the way Russians do it. <laughs> I prefer the American style. And, um, okay. I think we're close to the speed where we will release flaps. So let's release flaps in. Well, when we reach. Uh, Maybe when we reach. Okay, now. I press the wrong thing here. Okay. Okay, we see the airport. We can add throttle now. I presume the flaps are out. Okay, flaps are out. Airport is in front of us. And we should be good to go. to make engines same RPM, you know. It's kind of difficult to adjust the throttles apart. Okay, let's drop down the gear. Let's not delay it. Let's check. Okay, everything is good. 340 is good speed for landing in this plane. But this plane uh, better be faster than slower, so and higher than lower. So that's how this plane is, you know. So I add a little bit of power. Okay, let me just have a look here. Okay, now gently align myself with the airstrip. Everything here needs to be super gentle because this plane is a wild horse, I can tell you that. If Mustang was difficult to land, I can tell you that this plane is next to impossible to land. I think anyone who can fly this plane in real life should get lots of, you know, awards for doing it because <laughs> this is so difficult. <laughs> this is so difficult to fly. Oh my god. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a bit. Center the view, zoom in, okay. Maybe even more. I wanna focus on this airstrip. So I'm gonna do this. Now, altitude is good, everything looks good, slightly to the right. Okay, we're very high, 200 meters, 140. Okay, we cross the center, I think so. I think we cross the center, we're at the center, okay. Okay, we have 75 meters past the beacon. Okay, uh, 34 meters. Okay. All right, it wasn't bad. There were some wires that I was worried about them, but thankfully everything was fine. 240, we can drop parachute and stop with brakes a bit which are a bit analog, are not analog. Go down to 80. Okay, release parachute. Okay, done a great job. My goodness, that was a terrifying experience. <laughs> if I ever in my life have to land MiG-29, that is, you know, That's um, an experience that is really, really terrifying. There's lots of exits on this airstrip. Okay, let's take this one. Seems like this one is good. There's some planes there. I'm not entirely sure that this airstrip is designed for, big, uh, for jets. <laughs> you know. It's long enough. But I managed. This is MiG-29. Those planes are designed to land in weird places. You know. Ideally, I want to take off and land on the airstrip, but there is a reason why those planes have big wheels and indestructible. You know, they are almost indestructible. Um, I don't know. I 
where's the, the lines on the right side maybe hard to say this plaza is so big I don't know where I'm going honestly I'm just gonna park here at this fence maybe like those planes there next to those planes let's go next to those planes Okay, oh, they're on the grass, so we don't want to be on the grass. This plane maybe gets on the grass, it gets stuck, it doesn't go anywhere. <laughs> down and jeans let's turn them off now let's use this mouse here it would be cool if mouse was working in such a way that I didn't have to do this and then this if I could just move my cursor and if I move my cursor closer here the view just follows slower or faster depending like like if the view was just following in exponential you know, average pattern, exponential rolling average to, to put the pointer in the center. So if I'm moving my pointer, the view could just go slowly, slowly, something like this, you know? So actually the other way, if I'm moving my cursor down, the view should go like, so that I can just, you know, move my mouse around and just click things and the view just moves around. And then I do this and reset. And you know, because it makes no sense. I wanna, I wanna click something, and I, how do I do that? I need to move the view. So that's. Uh, but on this plane, there's nothing I can click. Actually, nothing clicks. Yeah, there's no click of elements. So now engines are off. So we just do this. We turn off the battery. Um, probably wanna turn off these lights as well because. Right. Flaps could go up, but it's... Oh, okay, they will go up. The controls are still operating, even though the engines are in front of Unix. So I don't think this is realistic. But yeah, okay, so that was fantastic flight in MiG-29. This fantastic airplane. 